Hey, put that GPU on an external dock. Amazon's not gonna put their eyes in your robot vacuum. And AMD is gonna put their Zen 5 in your computer and real Kyle. soon. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. Tuesday, in it. Friday is Groundhog Day, which I found out matters a lot more to Pennsylvanians than I thought it did. You don't diss Punxsutawney Phil like that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't diss him. Wait, is it the same Punxsutawney Phil? It dies, right? And like they just deem it he as a new forever. one. He lives forever. I don't know how. It, oh, he's trapped. You should. Like Bill Murray. Got it. He just constantly the same day over That's and over That's what again. they base the movie on, yes. Okay. Eternal creature, Punxsutawney Phil. Being. My bad. Not yes. a creature. Yeah, he was not created. He is a ever existent force, just mm -hmm. like graphics cars. You play video games on them, you capture things in PAL world. You been enjoying that game? I've played 48 hours in seven days. Are you serious? <laughs> is that what you do with your time off? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You just spent <laughs> your time at work in the game. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Anyways, in case you want to play that on an external GPU using the Oculink connector, now we have some details coming out on just how much of a performance hit you're looking at. And in case you're not familiar with what an Oculink connector, it is the external port that you can find on certain devices that allow you to get external graphics cards. You got this. There you go. So this is different than Thunderbolt because it has higher capacity and it's also better than something you'd find on the ROG Ally using the XG Mobile port because this is proprietary, whereas Oculink is an open standard that other companies can use. The device I'm showing you here is the One X player. This is a prototype. What the freaking heck is that? Prototype. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just got this when we got back. It's it's a 10 inch. It oh, has an Intel. It looks like a surface. A little bit. It has the Intel Core Ultra 5 135H, 14 cores, 18 th uh, threads, 32 gigs of RAM, arc graphics. I'm really, this is like the MSI Claw almost, but bigger. And it will have controller one time when they send them. What in the? Dock a joke on. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. Oculink can also be found on certain other devices. Lenovo is supposed to be supporting it as well as the GPD Win Mini, which we did a video of. You can check it out right up there. But somebody got their hands on a 4090 and a 4070 Ti, and they put it Whoa. on the Oculink connector. And what they found is that despite the fact that Oculink has 60% more bandwidth than Thunderbolt 4, it actually doesn't reduce your performance all that much. 10% when you're using a 4070 Tissipur and 22.6% when you're using a 4090. So there is a bit of a reduction. However, there are some things to consider. So the testing that was done was TimeSpy with the Tissipur, which showed that performance loss comes at 1440p because TimeSpy is a 1440p game. But the 4090, when you're using the 4K version of TimeSpy, TimeSpy Extreme, you can find up to a 0% performance loss when you have it connected to an external screen. So there is also an added performance loss when you have it connected to the internal screen. So if I were to put a 4090 on this Oculink and only display to the 10.1 inch, then I would lose performance. But if I hooked it up to a 4K display, I'd get even more performance out of it. This is actually really good okay. to know that 64 gigabits per second that you get from Oculink appears to be very good, which is also one of the reasons why we're excited for Thunderbolt 5, which is supposed to be launching at Ho some point. Hopefully not near me. I don't want to get electrocuted. That would be terrible for you. Anyways, Thunderbolt 5 is supposed to have 80 gigabits of bandwidth, which could allow for even less performance loss on your 4090 that you're slapping onto your <laughs> little you're tablet. you're going to say even less performance. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going for here. I just, I want, that's why I have these handhelds. I want less performance than I get on my 4090. Worse gaming. Worse please. gaming. That's all I want. Mm, waiter. A better setup is what you want from today's video sponsor. Thanks to today's video sponsor, Fazebo. Fazebo offers high quality and visually appealing standing desks. During Reese's recent stay, we needed a desk for him. So we stole one from my business manager, Sydney. Now, thanks to Fazebo, Sydney can again have a standing desk. And when it comes to desks, Fazebo's approach is simple and practical. Their S series of frames are easy to install onto your desktop and feature an inverted leg orientation, allowing for extra welds in the construction process, giving you a more stable 
table desk to work at. The desktops themselves are constructed of solid wood and make for a sturdy and reliable work surface. Fazebo's desks also come in a variety of different desktop configurations. Choose between something simple like the Alita glass desktop or get something a little more intricate like their triple motor L-shaped desk with integrated LEDs and drawers. Additionally, Fazebo makes operating the desk super simple. On the K7 keypad, you'll find a simple layout with your directional arrow buttons for raising and lowering the desk, up to four preset buttons, a sedentary reminder, and even a child lock so the desk only moves when you want it to. You can also easily power other devices from the keypad hub with its included USB-A and USB-C ports. The desk we chose for Sydney is the mid-century standing desk. This desk comes in a gorgeous black walnut finish, has a 48 inch by 26 inch desktop, and three drawers to increase storage space. The desktop is sturdy and solid, and the drawers slide out smoothly, giving you ease of access to your things while working at said desk. If you're unfamiliar with standing desks, they provide many benefits over their traditional counterparts. Standing while working at a desk has been linked to improving your muscle and joint health, as well as reduce your caffeine intake and boost productivity. If you're looking to upgrade your desk setup, consider choosing a standing desk from Fazebo via the link in the video description. A big thanks to Fazebo for sponsoring today's video and hooking Sydney up with a great desk. Well, Microsoft, you know, they said it's not gonna stand anymore. They're, they're, they're sitting down WordPad. Uh -huh. They are getting rid of WordPad after 28 years. It's gone. No. This Windows 95 little application is dead. Why though? <laughs> Why <laughs> kill it's, it? It's a deprecated feature. It's no longer in development. It's not going to be part of Windows 11 anymore. It's gone. All right. But just remember that they also did this with Microsoft Paint. And then they decided that was a terrible idea and they brought it back better than ever. And, and now, now it has it's layers. Photoshop. It's actually kind of like a free version of Photoshop for sure. I haven't used it, I'll be honest. I have. It's actually not bad on doing the very basics of what you want Photoshop to do. It's good stuff. Hmm. I like it. Anyways, I don't know if WordPad's going to come back because you have Notepad, which is included for free. They have Microsoft Word, which is paid for. Then people have also used Notepad. Notepad plus plus for a very long time. So there's there's options out on the market. I Microsoft Paint kind of was like a, a thing that people use, whereas like just use Notepad. Why let me know if you have a reason for using WordPad over Notepad. I'm sure there is a niche use case that you, you are wanna, going to describe to me down below. If you want to format slightly <laughs> I and you don't have internet to use Google Docs. Why are you so loud? You don't have internet, you can't use Google Docs. Yep. There you go. Reese, 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 Reese. There we go. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the lovely little Sparkle Intel Arc A310 graphics card going for only $89.99, making it $20 off. Then next up, we have this Montec Titan Gold 850 watt fully modular power supply for only $99.99, making it $50 off. And then continuing the trend from yesterday, we have this Gigabyte Radeon RX 7800 XT going for only $479.99 with the included promo code. And hey, those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest your hot news. Cheers. Turns out Amazon thinks that they had a really good deal with buying iRobot, which is the maker of Roomba, but turns out that the European Union just wants to ruin everybody's fun. So They're doing what on everyone's fun? European. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're... Ah, uh, they're peeing on everybody. <laughs> Amazon announcing that they are no longer going to be acquiring iRobot and iRobot having to then announce that they're laying off 31% of their workforce with 350 people's jobs being at stake. And one of the reasons for this is that there is no path to regulatory approval in the European Union. This wouldn't have happened if they didn't steal their name from that one Will Smith movie. Yes, that is that is why you should know iRobot, mm -hmm. not the Isaac Asimov book. Nope. Nope, definitely not. This leads to Amazon having to pay $94 million to iRobot because they uh, that's part of the severance agreement and iRobot is losing money now. I have one. Actually, no, mine's a shark. Yeah, you... you <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of anything you would own, you don't have a name brand vacuum robot. No, I have the one that's equally as expensive, but... <laughs> different brand. Speaking of your your choices in buying things for your household, yes. can you please show off the t-shirt that Michael got you? I do. He didn't he didn't get it for me. This is from our friend Sam. This is my new shirt. Naruto and Trent. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Kyler wears. On the back it says Trenton. New Jersey. <laughs> Home of pork roll. I don't think it's been worn. This looks very new. Hmm. 
definitely sat in somebody's closet. Well, AMD thinks that their CPUs are worn. They're getting rid of Zen 4 in favor of Zen 5. And we got new reports coming out from well-known leakers that it's coming out sooner than I was personally anticipating. I was really thinking that second half of 2024, if not like maybe uh, June at the earliest. And it turns out that there are new reports indicating that it should ha be happening closer to the middle of the second quarter with April through June being the timeline. And additionally, it's going to be called Ryzen 9000, which is just awful if true. Such a bad name, especially with the fact that they AMD changed their naming scheme so that the numbers would line up with the year for mobile. Yeah. And then th they're not going to do that for for the desktop CPUs, because we already got 8,000, turns out that's just the APUs, then I guess whatever OEM crap they're gonna sell later this year, and then the desktop version's gonna be Ryzen 9000. It's I don't like it. Their 9,000th name they've ever made. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> and then a lot of it's gonna be very similar. AM5, same design, same chiplet design, IO, all of that. But it is gonna have a double digit IPC uplift, putting it over whatever is out on the market from Intel right now with the 14900K. You increase the 7800X3D by 10% and you, you are beating whatever Intel has out on the market, which bodes very well for AMD because Intel's not expected to launch Arrow Lake anytime soon. They launched the 14900K not that long ago. There were some hints at a 14900KS that's supposed to be launching soon, which is just higher clock speed. But from what I can gather, Intel's not ready to release a new generation of CPU. So if AMD is ready to go with Zen 5, they're just even more obvious or of a choice for you to buy for your gaming PC and potentially anything else that you're doing. I mean, if Intel wants to just keep doing the the power efficiency stuff for a little bit stuff on the lower end yeah maybe take a little just intel i3 little, stuff little mm -mm -mm. hang out they won't but they could they could they could they could take a little stepsies back and be like all right this is where we this is where we do play i'm gonna tell you based on talking with intel people at ces yeah no I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not gonna do that but that's could. not who they are <laughs> they could do that and you know what we could do go home you just had a week off, buddy. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Sir Cartark saying, I actually used AMD Link app, but I've only had issues with it. The only time it actually worked was when my friend, who was across the US from me, connected to my PC to try out some games. It performed below decent during that time, but I could never get it to work on my phone, and it would always mess up on my AMD app on my PC, and I would have to re-download it using DDU every time it crashed. It was fun while it lasted, though rip. Did you know AMD had a mobile app? No. where you could stream games to your phone. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were also a lot of people talking about how they used it as a performance overlay, like it displayed really cool stats. Yeah. Uh, but they're shutting it down. It's well, dead now. Ripperoni. Uh, there was another comment where somebody was like, I gotta go download it now before they get rid of it. Is it gone officially now? I, I, I'm not interested enough to check. I guess you can. You can try to find the AMD Link app if you want. Well, most people commenting that they use Steam Link or some other alternative. Yeah, like this doesn't make any it. sense to use this. <laughs> oh, but you're gonna, <laughs> you don't even have an AMD graphics card. It's not gonna work. I have an old one. I can I can use my uh, 5500, 5500 XT. Oh my yeah. Goodness. Anyways, Paul Shookman saying, "Why are you drinking the Soylent like Homelander?" I saw this, and I said, "Let me live how I want to live. I do want to watch what specifically." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still it's. I I did drink that a little bit. Are you downloading it? Oh my goodness. Kyler's getting the AMD Link app, and, but Aaron Beeston saying, "Even on Mondays, I can hear." I'm Kyle in the middle of an intro. <laughs> nah, you did it today. And then we got a Godelli in shock saying, if Meta wants to be the Android of the VR world, they'll need to disconnect Facebook from their devices and accounts. They do that. They do, they, that's already done. Like on your MetaQuest 3, you had to log in with your Meta account, right? Yeah, you but- You could log in with Facebook. Well, but, but your, it, the Meta account is like an umbrella account for Facebook and Instagram. Right, kind of like your Google account is for your YouTube account and everything else. Y yeah. So it's, I, but I think like, it's very similar. It, if you have a Facebook and you have linked it to your Meta account, then it is tied to that. But my, it's, my Meta profile, whenever I put on the headset, is automatically my Facebook profile picture. Did you remember the password for that? No, but that's the fun thing. Even if you don't know the password, they still link it. <laughs> I can't access my Facebook. I'm really excited to try this thing out. 
you know we're still filming. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we do here? I can't see you using your phone. That screen protector so good. Okay, Kyle's gonna play with his AMD link. Yeah, I am. On, with your 4070 Ti. I'm gonna... Gonna skibbity. Yeah? 